Normally I finish making the design before I uh, make a video of it, but uh, in this case, I don't have the pylons under the wings done, or the uh, missile system, flare and chaff. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have flare and chaff on this yet. I, uh, I need to research whether the real thing had flare and chaff. But this is a MiG-25 Foxbat based on the one that was submitted for episode 77 of Plane Reviews. I ended up reusing nothing. Nothing at all. Um, but I did use it for inspiration as you will see when I go through the variations. I also literally just finished, I mean, not finished in terms of the fact that I haven't, um, I haven't actually, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I haven't, let's go ahead and enable the, uh, flaps. I haven't actually finished building it yet, because I need to put those pylons on, like I just said, and the weapon system and everything, and also make a pure stock version, because this version, as you can see, has the BD Armory nose on the front. Anyhow, Breaks. This is the first time I've landed one, so wasn't sure how that would go either, but it seems to go fairly well, even though, of course, we're not on the runway. I do have um, stronger breaks on the back, although, um, based on this landing experience, I think I'm going to... Actually, no, I'm going to leave those the same. And uh, the front has uh, slightly reduced brakes, and basically the, the reasoning behind that is because it has such a narrow wheelbase, I didn't want there to be too much braking power in the front because I essentially want the braking power of the rear to kind of make it want to stay straight a little bit by the fact that, you know, if you have greater braking on the rear, then it'll try to kind of even out if that makes sense. It's it's hard to it's hard to make sense. I, I hard to make sense. I'm sorry, I just I happen to glance over and see something just on my other monitor that distracted me. In any case, uh, one thing I have to say about this design, though, is I think that it's um, it's a little too narrow. Um, I was trying to go for the right aesthetic, and I feel like it, if if it, it, maybe make it slightly less tall and a little wider would probably actually do better. But uh, at this point, I'm kind of uh, finished with it how it is. I'm not going to do that. It's also a little too long. Um, it's not as long as the version it was based off of, and in fact it might not be as wide either, but I feel like it's still a little too long. You can see the tailplane is very different as well. I felt like this is a bit more accurate. It's still, it actually, if it was more accurate, it would come down, it'd be something more like this shape. It wouldn't go down as far. I think the wings also, mm, the wings actually might need to go a little further back. Um, you might notice that uh, the tailplane is slightly angled, and that's just because of the aerodynamics performance of this, basically where everything ended up in the end. Um, that's not really accurate. I wish we had more variety in wheels, because if we did, the wheels would be a bit more accurate, but I just don't have that capability, unfortunately, with the parts provided. In any case, I'm gonna go through the variations. So the first part I saved at was just after I started the main body design because I figured, okay, two of these, I mean, one of these on the top and the bottom can effectively encase the parts that I wanted them to, and I had this because I knew the sides were going to be made out of this. As you can see, it's actually too tall for how thin I originally was going to have it. Um, if I'd kept it like this if and, and not used these side panels, I think that would have been a slightly better look. Maybe if I had um, brought the whole body up just a little bit, to match this better, because uh, right now it's uh, goes dips down just a little bit there. Although actually, it's it's barely an effect. But in any case, uh, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do the side panels yet, and I thought maybe I would use this, but ended up not doing that. Obviously, work in progress two was when I decided to make another save in case I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I tilted this a little bit. You can see. Um, I forget if the engines were on the other version. Yeah, they were because I was using them to decide exactly how to. Uh, space things. Oh, that reminds me. Um, the key that I was mentioning that I need to do something like this is shift. So I'm in offset mode and I'm holding shift and I clicked the wrong part. <laughs> I didn't click the wrong part. I forgot that if you hold shift while clicking a part, it selects the root part for some reason. But in any case, you can see I'm now selecting this intake and if I'm, if I do normal offset, I can barely, I can, I can't even move it forward that much and I can move it backwards about that far, but it's pretty far, but if I hold shift, I can take it anywhere, which is uh, pretty useful. But in any case, you also notice that in this version, 
This has been moved all the way back so that the intake is in proper alignment with the cockpit. I forget if the other version had this angled the same way or not. Oh yes, I also, you can see it's it's taller now because I made this match up better. Work in progress 3 is the body finished, essentially. I extended everything out and decided this was the length that we were going to work with. Work in progress 4, at this point you can see the other version that I was working with on the side here because I actually at that point had reattached what was left of it, which due to some bugs in KSP, which was interesting. Uh, it's got disassembled slightly more than it actually was at the beginning, but you can see... Oh, excuse me. For comparison's sake, you can see what I'm looking at as I'm working on this, and you can see that, uh, for instance, you can see where I was originally going to copy the tailplane, but I ended up modifying it. Well, actually, I, I had already modified it some, so see how, see how this is Z-fighting right here? and mine isn't Z-fighting. Of course it's deployed right now, but if it wasn't deployed, it still wouldn't be Z-fighting. And you can see a little bit already that it's slightly shorter, and you can also see the tailplane that I eventually decided upon. Work in progress 5 is when I actually put that tailplane in, and I also realized that I made a mistake, and that was actually sticking through the engine in a visible way. I knew I wanted to add potentially clipped engines anyhow, I was originally going to do doubling up on Panthers, but I did Weasley so that it would hide that, and it also looks pretty good, so there we go. I also used this to hide that up a little bit and make it the tail end look better, although it does stick down ugly, and that gets fixed eventually. Here you can see I've got the main frame basically done, but you notice I don't have as much control surface on the wing, which ends up being a large problem. This is the first version that goes for a test flight, and if I remember correctly, it has... Huh, Oh, okay, no, this was not the first test flight version based on the fact that that is not strutted at all. But ignoring the middle part being not strutted for a moment, the biggest problem that happened with the first version that I did fly is that the center... Actually, I don't have an action group for afterburners. I just tried to activate them. But the center wing part comes up, as you'll see here in a moment. Yeah, and so when you're doing a high G turn... You can see that pulls away quite a bit. Now you might notice that while this isn't strutted at all, that most of the pieces are in somewhat of an alignment. It's it's really that top bit that is crazy. Now the reason for this is that all of these top parts and bottom parts are actually attached to the cockpit directly and then moved into position where they are. So they don't strain that much by the maneuvers. Whereas, uh, of course, except this one, which has the wing loading on it, so of course it's going to maneuver quite badly. And, oh, Ooh, I might even, yep, I was going to say, I might even be able to just break it apart. And also, now you can see clearly what's attached to the cockpit, because those are the pieces that are still attached right now, even though they clearly shouldn't be. Now, the work in progress 7, I believe, is where I started auto-strutting things. Yes, that has been auto-strutted, that has been auto-strutted, that has been auto-strutted. All the things have been on a shred, so it's much stabler. Uh, this was before I finished up some of the minor aesthetic details and repositioning of the tail and engine slightly. I also at some point during that, or during this version, I have put in a strut hidden in the wing, which ended up showing visibly on this side for some reason. Oh, you know what it is? I, I think it's that, uh, for some... <sighs> So with mirroring, okay, okay, let, let's do a little test real quick, because I have a feeling I know how this is going to work. There we go, fuel lines. Okay, so let's do mirrored fuel lines, right? Oh, that did not work as intended. Okay, let's do mirrored fuel lines. That, again, did not work as intended. Oy, oy, oy. Mirrored fuel lines. Uh, hold on, I got this. Just give me a second. Mirrored fuel lines. There we go. So... In this version, they added the capability to move the end pieces separately. However, as you are noticing here, while the first piece synchronizes where it moves, the second piece does not. Let's put that in absolute for a moment. So I scratch it all the way out there, and you can see this one has not moved at all. Now I'm curious, can I move this one separately? I can. So it's not completely broken, but that explains what happened with the struts, because this is the position the second one was in originally. In any case, the work in progress 9, or the 8 if I wasn't looking closely enough, adds the second strut there. I also... no, this is not where I did it yet. No, yeah it is. Um, 
Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but the Weasley engines are actually slightly angled upwards to give us a slight pitch effect and help it pull up. That's also what I did to the tailplane here. And the Work in Progress 10, which is the one you saw me flying, angles these slightly inwards as well, slightly dihedral, and it also removes the struts because they ended up being completely pointless. Oh yeah, at some point I added in little RCS ports here to block that off because you could see this moving within the vehicle. That's the kind of part clipping I hate, when it makes zero sense. Like this, I find tolerable because you can't see it obviously clipped in action. Same thing here, that's clipped pretty far, but you can't see it clipped in an ugly way. And, and, sorry, I just keep trying to explain it because people keep not understanding what I mean. There's some forms of part clipping I find acceptable or even beautiful, but other forms not so much. In any case, this is my current work in progress on the MiG-25 Foxbat, and I will see you in space.